Hello YouTube, Bowtie Media here, and Joji is here with his third studio album. We had Ballads 1 in 2018, we had Nectar in 2020, and now Smithereens in 2022. It is insane that this guy, Pink Guy, is Joji. Like, the fact that Pink Guy does that stuff and Glimpse of Us released was the was a single on this upcoming album, this album that we're going to listen to. That's, that's crazy. Um, and I hopefully, <laughs> maybe I blew your mind there, but the, those two people are the same. If you don't, if you didn't know what Pink Guy was beforehand, just, I would just implore you, don't bother. Don't bother. For your own sanity, don't even bother. Uh, but Joji is here for his third studio album, and I'm super excited to get into it and react to it. Uh, two singles came out earlier with Glimpse of Us, which took the internet, or took, I guess, media by storm, and uh, was probably his most successful song to date by far, uh, with already uh, a quarter or a half a billion streams, over half a billion streams on Spotify. And so he's just popping off, and we'll see how uh, Smithereens goes. And then Yukon Interlude was, Yukon Interlude was there too, but... Um, we're gonna listen through all nine songs here. There's technically two sides of the disc. Uh, it's a pretty quick album. It's about uh, 24 minutes. And so uh, we will listen to every song and let's, um, without any further ado, let's hop into it. Uh, this is Glimpse of Us. <laughs> Just a fantastic track. My goodness. I'm, I'm, un, I don't know if it's potentially his best track to date. It may be, it maybe is. Glimpse of Us is so phenomenal. Oh man, it's, it's so good. Um, okay, so that track is fantastic. It is, it is all over everywhere. You have your opinions about it already at this point. Um, I think I realized about this recently actually was that, uh, so the song is obviously about the, um, in a relationship with one person, but, uh, having a glimpse of in the good moments, getting a glimpse of actually a relationship that was with another person that was actually better. And so you're looking back at a former relationship. Um, I realized this song could be a lot more like, it can be a lot more of an emotional gut punch if that other past person is, is gone actually. Um, I was, I don't know why I was thinking about it, but I was like, wow, wait a second. If that like person that you're thinking of back then is someone that had passed away, like that is, that this adds so much more of an emotional gut punch um, to think that you'll, you could never have what was at, at, at some point. So I don't want to think about it too much, but uh, that is, it is, it's deadly. It's a deadly track. Um, also looking at the album holistically wise, uh, I wonder if the first disc here, the t t top four songs are going to be kind of like ballad, like love song ballads. And then the disc two is going to be a little bit more old school kind of trip hop, Joji kind of darker style. Um, just because disc two, disc one has no like explicit songs. Um, and disc two has a few and there's the interlude on there and there's like, it says like a demo and a freestyle. So my guess is the first five songs will be a lot more put together where the back end will be a little bit more of a kind of an old school Joji kind of sound. Not that it wasn't put together, but I think you know what I mean. So uh, let's hop into the second track here. This is uh, Feeling Like the End. Okay, interesting. So that, that felt like an interlude-esque style song um, where, I mean, it was pretty short at a minute 42. Most of the songs are actually pretty short here. Um, that, that was the shortest song, though, on the record, on the LP. So um, not bad, though. That uh, very reminiscent of like an old style of Joji of just the kind of uh, trappy sound with those like kind of just clean hi-hats and his kind of more uh, stylistically monotone delivery. Um, so... Yeah, not not bad. I don't have a ton to say about it. I think that one's uh, like solid, but it, it's it's a better like for an interlude song. If we're gonna call it an interlude, even though there's other ones that are actually called interlude, if we're gonna call it like a kind of in between middle track. Uh, it does feel good for those kind of tracks, but if it's like a full fledged track, it's a little a little underwhelming just because there's not a lot happening. But uh, we'll see where it goes the rest of the project stylistically. So uh, here we go. This is the third track, "Die for You," and the second longest. Wow. Okay. That has got to be the brightest Joji track in his discography. Like it's got to be. And by bright, I mean like, so Joji's always kind of done this bit of a, <laughs> and I guess George Miller in general has done like a bit of a, he's always been on the edgy side with those kind of darker tones and like the, even when a song is more like kind of grand, like uh, uh, let's say you based off of um, from Nectar. 
it's still a little it has a darker kind of atmosphere and tonality to it and it feels a little more mysterious and dangerous where this was very it was very free flowing but still was quite bright which is the nice kind of like like spacey sounds in the back and in bells and it just felt very uplifting and energizing almost it was weird like there's there's a it's hard to okay joji has a lot of people talk about joji and specifically listening to like late night driving there's a couple artists that you can always think of like oh yeah when i love late night driving late night drives or late night dark kind of times with friends or by yourself even uh, there's certain artists personally for me eden is a big one eden i love and those kind of late night drives joji is another perfect one for that for example but uh joji's always been that kind of like a little too dark in some areas but this is like such an like fun uplifting yet still deeply tragic track uh that still has the same lyrical narratives that he has in the past that he's conveyed and just about love and loss and relationships but still puts it packages it with a much brighter tonality that is is a, a unique take for him so i i really like that track i i was a huge fan of that so uh but let's hop into the next one this is actually the second longest track on the uh, lp this is uh, before the day is over. Okay, not bad. That one felt a little more uh, repetitive in nature. Uh, I did like the back end quite a bit with that kind of uh, more switch up of a, of a trap style beat, of a chill trip hop kind of style beat. So... Uh, yeah, I like I like that back end quite a bit. It did feel like a little more. I maybe just coming off of "Die for You," that one felt a little tad underwhelming. Uh, not too bad. Still another great song. I think in context with the rest of the project, um, I think the whole thing sounds very cohesive. I think at this moment, um, even though it is fairly short, as we're coming to the end of the first disc here. But uh, yeah, I, I like that song not nothing to write home about i think personally for me on that one um not definitely not a highlight i would say but uh still still solid so uh let's hop into the finale of this disc one though this is uh dissolve of course the song called dissolve has to have a slow fade or a dissolve of in the end so um, okay, uh, that is Dissolve, the final track from the disc one of the project. And the, yeah, that track, not too bad. Um, I, again, I did expect the kind of beat to come in there, but I, I understand now the whole con or the whole project of the first disc, the whole, what's the word I'm looking for? Just the, the style, the atmosphere, the tone, the, the everything about it kind of feels a lot more cohesive. Now it feels, I understand it. It's a little more acoustic driven rather than uh, still have that kind of lo-fi sentimental, sentimentalness, sentimentality. I think it's, I don't know. Uh, still acoustic with a kind of bit of lo-fi to it. That's a lot brighter than it has been in the past. i not going as dark for Joji. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm fascinated to see what the rest of this project's gonna look like. I'm I'm more just I'm thinking more to the second disc right away. So my, my mind is did a gear shift there where I'm 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 intrigued now more so on see what this back end's gonna be like. So uh also I realized what's the difference between his capitalized songs versus not like all caps, like the last disc is all caps, Knight Rider, blah blah blah, demo, Yukon, and one am freestyle versus everything else is like in regular punctuation. That's our regular capitalization, so uh, but here we go. This is Night Rider, the start of the second disc. Okay, I believe I was right about the first disc being more a somber, like kind of emotional take of tracks of ballads versus the disc two being a little bit more of the old school Joji style with the more darker tone and trip hop style versus a little bit more of the acoustic ballad types of the first. So. I believe I was right. I believe I would say I was quite right. I mean, that was just one song. And I mean, I, I know you can already, but um, yeah, that's a, I actually, I actually really like that. That It did feel a little bit like a cut track of sorts. It felt like a, a little bit of a, a whip, like a, a work in progress style track, but I really did like it. And I think after hearing the rest of these kind of four, maybe that'll all this back end will feel a little bit more cohesive in that sense, but uh, yeah, the, the, I mean, that is the whole project right now. Just feel, it does feel a little short, but uh, that's, uh, I guess that's what we're getting with this project. So uh, I'm excited to get into the next one. So here is the uh, blah, blah, blah demo. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, that was uh, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> the weird like tempo change at the end. Um, the, I guess the pseudo tempo change really caught me off guard. Uh, it felt. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, that was weird. That was uh, that was an interesting one for sure. That that did feel like Joji for sure. That felt like a more old school kind of maybe in tongues or ballads Joji. Uh, that <laughs> like the difference between that and a glimpse of us feels like night and day. Um, while still being a Joji track, so that was <laughs> that one's a little more fun. But I don't know if I uh, see myself returning to this one a whole ton personally. But not bad. Uh, just I. Yeah, I don't know. It just, I just don't think I'll return this one a whole ton unless I'm listening to the album all the way through. So, yeah. Uh, let's head into the Yukon interlude now, uh, the song we've already listened to or we already know about, but uh, we will listen to it again here. So here we go. This is the Yukon interlude. <laughs> Yeah, Yukon's great. I still think it's one of the better tracks in this one. Maybe just because I've I've had more fondness and I've let it grow on me a little bit, but I really do like Yukon quite a bit. It's just a just kind of a classic. Not not want to say classic. It just feels like a it just feels like a great Joji song. It, it feels like a, a a more kind of got that old school tonality to it, but still feels a little bit more of a newer Joji song. Doesn't something that wouldn't really fit off of a ballads or nectar, but fits great in the context of his new stuff like this so um absolutely love yukon i think it's one of the better tracks here but uh let's hop into the final track of this album this is the uh 1 a.m freestyle let's go <laughs> wow great just final punctuation mark to the project i think that was a, another one i really liked it was a great or oh, just I don't know. It was a short track, but it felt like it wrapped the whole thing up so well. Something about it just felt like the, just the ribbon on top of the present. It was just like a whoop, all done. Here you go. The bow tie, you could say. <laughs> um, but that was, that was fantastic. I, whoo, that was, that was, that was one of the better ones, I think too. Okay. Uh, album as a whole, uh, as holistically, um, is, is this his best? Is this, is Smithereens the best Joji album? Is it? There's only three. I don't think it's Ballads 1, so it's either this or Nectar. But uh, I, I don't know. See, this one has a lot more narrative and atmospheric cohesion compared to, let's say, a Nectar did. Um, even though Ballads 1 did quite a bit, but um, I don't think the songs were as strong. There, yeah, there was there was a lot of great stuff on this, this album without, but none of it was really grand or out there which joji kind of had been known for in some capacity there's really there's like no features there's no nothing else it just feels like a it feels like a it feels like a diary entry it feels like i think the whole album feels like a, a two-page diary entry where there's one page and there's a second page um as the disc one and disc two i think that's the best way i would describe it it's it feels like a very somber realistic look into George Miller into Joji's and stuff he's feeling. And so there's a lot of narrative themes that are at play here and stuff that I need to do a deeper dive into as I uh, prepare to give an eventual score for this album or whatever. But uh, yeah, I would probably say this is his best. I would probably say this is his best album. I, I obviously, I think a lot of people will say, I think this will be the biggest takeaway. I think this is it right here. Fantastic. What is here is fantastic. It just could have been a little more. <laughs> could, could have been a little bit more. As some songs even expanded on or just a longer track list. I don't think this is the the end all project for Joji. I think this is a great stepping stone into a potentially magnum opus style album, but this is a definitely a right step, a step in the right direction, I think, for for George here. And it's great. It's 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 absolutely solid. I just, I think it's, it's, it's fantastic. We just need to, it, it, to be expanded upon a little bit more. And uh, then you, then you'll have the ultimate Joji album. But for now, I, I think this might be it, but yeah. Okay. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear any and all thoughts on this third studio album, Smithereens from Joji. Um, is this your favorite Joji album? If not, let me know why. If it is, let me know why as well. But with that, I'm Botai Media and I will see you guys in another video.